Hey, what's going on guys, it's Alex here. In my previous video, you saw me do a behind the scenes footage of a wedding. And I thought to myself, maybe I should show you guys what I carry in my camera bag for a wedding. So that's what this one's gonna be about. Now mind you, this is stuff that I've accumulated over the years, so I'm not flexing on any of you guys, okay? So just keep, keep that in mind, I'm very humble. So with that being said, the first thing that we need on this one is my backpack. And the backpack that I use is the PG1 PGY Tech One Mo Solo version one 25 liter. This guy got it about two, three years, no, three years ago, yeah. And as you can see, it's, it's still in really good shape. And I have no complaints about it. Uh, lots of storage options for you. You got some quick access over here for a camera. Pull in, pull out. Mind you, you got some storage units in here. Close this up real quick. Another e easy access bag right over here on this side. And the best part about this bag that I really like the most is if you look right here, you can see some little red dials right there. Whenever you're done using a battery and it runs out, you can mark it as red, indicating that that battery is empty. And then when you have the good ones, you can mark them as green. So that's what I really like about this. On the flip side, we have a tripod water bottle holder over here. And I usually put my tripod in there to be honest with you guys. And the cool part is it's got this little strap right here. So it really secures the tripod. So you can, you're gonna make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and bonus, security strap. So put that bad boy right there, lock it up, etc., etc. Anywho, moving on. More storage over here on this side in case you need to carry any cables. Like it, I carry a pen and some business cards in here and an air, air tag. All right, I'm gonna open this bad boy up. And before I open this guy up completely, there's more storage here in the front, as you can see with those zippers. So in case you need to carry a little bit more, it extends out. So that's what I like, it's really cool. And it's got an extra bag in here where you can insert more items. Ta-da! I usually don't use it that much, to be honest with you guys, so. But I just wanted to, I feel like I should just let you guys know about it. And then just zip it right back up. So with this backpack, it's not one of those like, like Peak Design where it just clamshell opens this way. You actually have to open it or unzip it and you lay it down and then there we go. So I'm gonna move my backpack right over here and I'm gonna slowly start putting things into the backpack as I, start, as I start explaining them to you. So that way you guys can kind of see how everything fits in here. And then at the end, I'll give you guys like a top down view. I'm probably just more of a POV. We'll see. Anywho, let's move on. All right, so the first subject that we're gonna talk about is cameras. And the main camera that I use my camera A for any event, especially during weddings, will be my FX3 with a tilter camera rig that has a hand strap on the side, comes in very, and it's very convenient for me. The lens of choice that I use to pair with my FX3 would be my 24 to 70 GM Mark II. Now, the reason I use this one is because I don't wanna to have to be switching through primes and you know risk getting dust in the sensor or on the lens. That would be a bad scenario. So 24 to 70, easy for me, and it's got all the focal lengths that I need anyways. So this is how you can catch me pretty much all day with just this camera. So this one's gonna go right in here. The next lens that I use is my uh, a7S III and that's my B cam. I'm actually currently using it to record this video. So I'm not gonna bring it out here and show you. But the lens that I use for my B cam would be my 70 200 2.8 GM Mark II. I, I swear I'm not being bougie or you know flexing on you guys. It's just something that I've worked up to and I know that I needed them for these scenarios. Now with this lens, I usually normally put it um, on the opposite side of the groom so that way I can kind of capture his reaction as the bride is coming down the aisle. But I'm normally hanging out right next to him regardless, but you know, you can never be too sure. So it's always good to have a backup plan. So this one would go right in here. All right, so next up is my C cam, which would be my a7 IV. Now the a7 IV was the first thing that I rocked with after my a7 III and I still love it. I really do, but the only crappy part would be that crop factor. 
you know, that crowd factor situation that we all, saw, the all Sony users dreaded. But honestly, if you can get past that, it's still a really valuable camera. And the fact that you can go from video to photo, no complaints. But I'm getting sidetracked. Let's get back into it. With this one, I pair it with my 85 millimeter lens. It's just a standard prime, uh, no GM. And there we have it. It's the 85 millimeter 1.8 but I don't have it at 1.8. I normally match it with uh, with my B lens, right? So I usually crank it up to about 2.8 f-stop, sometimes four, depending on the lighting scenario. Sometimes I'll even just crank up the shutter, but different subject, different time. Now, the reason for these three bodies, one, I'm a Sony user, and two, all of them record an SLOG 3. Best thing that could happen for me, especially because when it comes down to editing and color grading, it won't take me that long to color match. So that is why I love these three bodies. All right, so this one we're gonna put right in here. Another lens that I like to use during my day would be my 90 millimeter macro Sony lens. And it's just a G Mark lens. I know I shouldn't just say just because, you know, there's other people out there that are working for this stuff, but anywho. Yeah, this is one lens that I really like using. It helps me get those detail shots on the rings and the flowers and the details, any small thing that I just wanna make pop that'll make the video stand out just a little bit more, you know? And I do use it from time to time, but the thing is that with macro lenses, since it's such a shallow depth of field, you have to be really quick and pretty precise on what you're doing and how you're doing it because you have to be really quick on wedding days. So use it if you know that you're gonna have the time. If you don't, just rock with the other ones that you have because if not, everybody's gonna leave you behind and that's the last thing that you want. So this guy is gonna be put right right there. Okay, so now that you saw the cameras and the lenses that I use and how I use them and when I use them, we're gonna talk about audio. Audio is a huge factor when it comes to any video. Now, audio can really make or break your video real quick. I mean, you can have the most pristine videos and visuals, but if that audio sounds horrible, it's gonna go bad real quick. Now, I can say that with experience because I have made videos that were visually beautiful, but the sound just, it wasn't there, at least from my liking. I was able to save it, but still, I, I didn't personally like it. But the end user was like, this is really good. But again, maybe that's where imposter syndrome comes in. And, you know, let's get into the audio piece of this. The first thing that I always make sure that I bring with me are my lav mics. And those are the Tascam D DR10L. I have one in black. And I have one in white. Black one, pretty obvious. Use it for the, for the groom. They're normally in, in black tuxes anyways. The best part about the Tascam DR10Ls is that you can push them in and screw this. So now it's not gonna come undone. So if you were to leave it unscrewed, guess what? So you're gonna make sure there's no mistakes. I'll put this piece in the jacket pocket. You can't even see it at all. And then I'll usually run this one and put it on their lapel right about here. Now with the extra amount of cable that you see here, I usually just hide it in their pocket anyways, and I, but I leave some room for some slack in case I need to move around or when they dip the bride. So you keep that in mind. And I'll usually hide the wire and the mic by using these little stickies. And these are called Ursa stickies. And I'll leave a link in the description for you guys, but it takes about three. They're kind of small and supposedly you can use one to do it around the mic, but honestly, as you can see right there, it's not gonna really stick. So you wanna use two. If you use two, now I'm, it's not going anywhere. Trust me, I've done it multiple times. And then this one, in case there's any wire that's gonna, that you see kind of sticking out, you use that one. Onto the white one. The white one's obviously for the bride, white dress for the most part. And same rule. Push in there, twist, secured, okay? So you're probably wondering how I mic up the bread, and that's a very valid question. And I'm gonna show you, sort of. I have a thigh strap right here. And with the thigh strap, there is a little pocket. And it fits the task cam right in there. And it's very snug, so it's gonna take me a little bit to get this right or not. It's very snug. And I'll usually wrap this piece around 
the bride and I'll make sure that it goes on the inside of the leg, not the outside. Because if not, you're going to have this thing sticking out and you're going to see it through the dress. Not going to look good. So make sure it goes on the inside of the leg, right? Just like that. And strap. But before I even uh, screw on the end piece, what I do is I get the Ursa stickies. And I will do a sticky right here on the padding of the, of the dress, right almost near the cleavage area. Then I'll do another one like right at their sternum because most of the dresses you'll see a little seam right there. So that's where the other one would go. And if you're worried about these stickies injuring or messing up the dress, it's not gonna happen. They're not that sticky to where it's gonna cause damage. So let the bride know that and say it with confidence, because if you don't, then she's not gonna trust you, okay? And she's got a lot of other things to worry about. Do those things real quick before she slaps on the dress. Once she has done so, the rest of the slack is hanging down. You can have her push it in, twist it, pretty simple, then slap it onto the thigh on the inside of your leg, on the inside of her leg, and then you're pretty much set to go. And obviously, obviously turn it on, put it on record, and just walk away and make sure that it's got a full battery because it's gonna last you all day. So that's what comes with me for the first portion of audio. All right, next up in my audio gear would be my Rode shotgun mic. And this is really good for scratch audio, especially when it comes to delivering raw footage to when the bride requests it, because I do sell it as an upsell. Um, this comes in really handy. I mean, most of the footage that we deliver is anyways is raw, but this is better than the muffled stuff that you kind of hear and it's better quality and it's, Less of a hassle for you later on. I do highly recommend one of these. And I'll usually slap that one in on the B cam, obviously, because it's the closest to anything to everybody else that's in the area. And it's really good for atmosphere cap, uh, audio too, so. Okay, so now you have seen the task cam, the road mic, but there's another one, okay? This is the Zoom H1N. I use this one for this DJ speaker because I'm gonna be frank, I don't trust DJs, as good as they might be, I don't trust them. Because there will be those high pitch frequencies that just come in out of nowhere, right? And this is, and audio is a really important role in any video, like I said earlier. So keep that in mind, no matter how much you trust that DJ, even if you worked with them in the past, it's better to be safe than sorry, so it's good to have multiple sources of, of audio, okay? So with that being said, what I do is I attach this uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack right in there to a quarter inch over here to the back of their speaker. And then I test the audio. Obviously we bring the headphones and it doesn't have to be expensive headphones. It can be crappy $10 headphones, but as long as you can hear the audio and test it for yourself, that's always a key thing to do. But these, these are the ones that I bring with me regardless. And it's, it just cancels everything out. So it's really good for me. That way I don't have to hear everybody else and I can hear what's going on with the audio anyways. So that's, that's, for, that's what I do. So I also use now a 3.5 millimeter cable with an XLR male plugin because every DJ has got their own setup just like we do. And it's better to be safe than sorry, okay? And there's one more. I also have a 3.5 millimeter to XLR female. Let me tell you guys, I made the mistake of not taking audio seriously and I, when I got these cables, it was night and day difference. I mean, it made it the it made the whole difference for me. And in case one audio source fails, you have a backup. So you have the H1N, you have the Rode, that's probably gonna be your last case scenario. And you have your DR10Ls, both of them. One will suffice, but it's better to have two than one. And those lav mics, are a really good thing to have, especially for the both of them, because sometimes, and I'm not knocking on these, but sometimes they point their speakers to face each other, especially like on windy days. And then that audio sounds so scratched. So now this is useless. But thankfully for me, I mic'd up the bride, I mic'd up the groom. So now I have that source of audio. So just keep that in mind. Put those right in here. Now there is one more piece of audio. And again, don't think that I am flexing on you guys or that I buy everything all at once because that would have been a huge bill and that's not how I did things. And this one is the D 
DJI wireless mics. And I'm actually rocking one right now. This I, I get my audio for these YouTube videos. Now this right here, I usually strap it to a sleeve, a mic sleeve. So the mic sleeve, I'm gonna just use the Rode as an example. So when we're doing speeches, I obviously connect the H1N and then use it with any of the cables that I just showed you guys. But another source of audio, better just be safe than sorry. I'm gonna keep saying that because I made these mistakes. So what I do is I actually have the sleeve on the mic and then I'll clip this guy right here. Right there, just like that. Okay, and then the mic would go right in there. So now when they're talking, they're talking like this and then you have your backup audio right here. And just in case that DJ soundboard goes haywire, safe than sorry. Trust me, trust me, Fiona. <laughs> And guys, needless to say, I bring a crap load of batteries. I do have a V-mount battery as well. And I usually do that with the handheld rig that I have set up. But the other cameras may or may not die. So, you know, always better to be safe than sorry. I think I have a total of one, two, three, six batteries. But Mind you, three of those came with the Sony cameras already, so I got like three or four extras. As you heard me say earlier, I do have a handheld rig, but I bring a gimbal with me. And I usually use the gimbal during golden hour because that's the steady footage that I wanna get. That's like your bread and butter right there. Now, I don't wanna say focus on posing a lot because you wanna grab those raw moments as well, but golden hour is a high priority. The one that I use is the RS3. Now, I do have a mini, and I thought the mini was gonna work for me, but I got suckered by influencers and it was just a horrible mess. But the payloads that I use for my cameras, the RS3 Pro is just, it works flawless for me, and I trust it because it can carry more weight, especially because I have camera rigs on, or not camera rigs, but the cage. So, and I'm not saying that they weigh a lot, but you know, sometimes you wanna add those extra things on it, so keep that in mind. Now that you've seen everything that I carry in my bag, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in here. Okay, so as you can see, here is my FX3, my A7 IV, 90, my DJI wireless mics, my 7200 right here, my audio cables right here, my Zoom, my Rode mic, and my lapel mics, the, D the task cams. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close this up. And like I said earlier, I usually have a tripod right in here, but there are times where I just put the gimbal in there. A little tripod piece first, right in there. And the reason I unscrew that is because I don't wanna rely on that little screw to hold everything because if I was a dinger to get this caught somewhere or on something, <laughs> it's gonna hurt my pocket a lot. So strap that in. There we go. All right, and there you have it. This is exactly what I use every single time I go shoot a wedding. Mind you, as the day goes on, you start unloading things, so the bag starts to get lighter, but then you put everything right back. And the best part, it's all in one place. But guys, before I let you go, if, if you don't mind doing me a solid, if you can hit that subscribe button or the like button, I'd really appreciate it. You'd be doing me a really big favor. And if you have any questions about any of the equipment that I use, please leave me a comment down below, and I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you, catch you in the next one.